Coming up this week, should Canada's electoral system be reformed? Also, we get your feedback on the federal government's response to the Fort McMurray fire. This and much more to come. Hitting the streets, this is Outburst. Hello and welcome to Outburst. I'm Glenn McGuinness. Will forest fires continue to burn in northern Alberta? The people of Fort McMurray, of course, have been hit very hard, and the fire continues to threaten oil sands work camps in the area. Firefighters have been nothing short of heroic fighting this blaze, and the Prime Minister recently toured the devastation in the area, although he turned down offers of help from Russia, Mexico, and the U.S. So we sent our cameras out to ask you if the reaction from Ottawa was good enough. Our question, how would you rate the federal government's response to the Fort McMurray fire? I actually thought it was quite responsive. I was getting a little worried with Trudeau not coming out till the Friday. I thought he should have been out a little bit earlier, but to be there the first or second day, that would take in too much of our valuable resources were needed at the fire. I think they're doing a good job. They've um, moved in as quickly as they could from what I can tell. Um, this is just the beginning, so it'll really depend on what happens from here on out, but they've got a good start. Uh, probably about like on a scale of one to ten, I'd say a seven or eight. Like, you don't want to try and put too many resources there when there's already that much stuff going on, right? Like, the response maybe could have been a little better, but it's hard to find that balance, so I think they did a pretty good job. I haven't read enough about it. I know the provincial government took primary on it, and Trudeau came in, but not at a time when he was getting in the way for photo ops. But I think they are doing, well, what they can. They're a relatively new government. I'm not totally unhappy with their posture. Probably had they acceded some of the EI demands the province asked earlier, it would have been better. I personally think that the federal government is doing a poor job. Uh, Justin Trudeau was there just a little while ago, but you know, um, the Red the Red Cross gave us money, the provincial government gave us money, but we have received nothing from the federal government. Well, just from reading the papers and uh, uh, what I've read in the papers and I've talked to some individuals, I think that the local people have done an excellent job as far as the local uh, government. Uh, now, I'm not too sure about uh, the provincial and uh, the federal government, but uh, I noticed they did get some, some cash. A terrible long lineup for those people. You'd think you, you, they could get a better system than those long lineups. How degrading. Very, very degrading. I think uh, they could have got a much better system going for those people. Felt real bad for them. I feel like it was positive. I feel like there's been a lot of support from all over the country, around the world. I think there can always be more done, but I think there is substantial right now. I'm satisfied with it, but then I love Justin Trudeau. I think his response was perfect. And what was what did you like about his response? I liked that it was timely and that he did get involved. And I hate that he was criticized for completing his, his um, commitments to go see President Obama. I thought that was kind of low of people. Oh, excellent, excellent. It's, uh, uh, they, they've indicated they're going to uh, assist them in, in, uh, financially. Uh, they haven't done it as yet, but it looks like it's gonna come into being. They have a commitment uh, to do that at least. Not very well, apparently, because I've been listening to that and they said Trudeau said that they weren't needing help from other nations, but <laughs> That's what I heard, anyway. <laughs> well, I don't think that they really jumped to the pump quite as fast as they should have, but they probably do a good job at the end. Uh, I think they're doing a good job, especially in terms of not putting a cap on the matching donations. Yep. And I certainly like that the Prime Minister's already had a chance to get out there and see the site. I think they're doing a really good job. Uh, you know, a lot of people complain that they turned down the help from foreign countries, but... Trudeau asked, uh, you know, the people who know best about that, and they said they didn't need the help, so they've got it under control. I think he's doing as good a job as anyone could. From the coverage I've seen, it seems like they're, you know, they're up front uh, right off the bat, you know, we'll, we'll help where we can, that kind of thing. 
obviously there's the you know the personal visit by the, the prime minister but uh, you know it's just tip of the iceberg I mean it's a long time to go so the immediate response is one thing but ongoing that's another story I think it's pretty reasonable overall yeah um, I mean I know there's been some criticism pertaining to that and uh, and I think it's mostly coming from those who are uh, maybe a little bit uh, uh, against liberals in general mostly from the conservatives that are that just are trying to nitpick everything which is fine that's uh, that's kind of what we need to do is to criticize and everything so so I'd say that's overall it's a, a good thing um, I think the federal government wanted to take a little bit of a step back let the firefighters do what they needed to do let the province of Alberta uh, de be the frontline um, responders and then uh, come in and uh, and uh, I provide assistance where necessary so I think it was very appropriate well the the fact that the it sounded like they were relying on uh, donations to uh, uh, to address the you know help helping the people there uh, was kind of odd to me I mean uh, I would I would expect government to uh, dig in the you know some money for for the people like they they find uh, money for the uh, you know for helping like refugees and stuff why not helping uh, our own people well the Fort McMurray fire was is obviously tragic and something like that you can't plan for a whole destruction of a of a city so I think in any situation that would be a very difficult um, problem to solve but I think at least I know the Alberta government um, followed through really well I'm really not sure what the federal government did I wasn't really following that part I was following the animals that were stuck in Fort McMurray I was obsessed about that <laughs> In which year did the Royal Canadian Navy come into existence? 1900, 1910, or 1915? 1915, 1910. 1915? <laughs> 1900, 1910, 1915. Uh, 1910. 1910. 1900. 1910. 1915? 1910. 1915? 1915. The answer? 1910. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Very good. On May 4th, 1910, the enactment of the Naval Service Act created the Department of the Naval Service and the establishment of the Canadian Navy. The prefix royal was added in 1911, creating the Royal Canadian Navy. The Zika virus continues to be a going concern in Canada. So far, there have been roughly 80 travel-related cases reported and one case through sexual transmission. The province of Nova Scotia also just confirmed its first case, but public health officials still feel the risk is low. The Zika virus is transmitted through mosquitoes or through sexual contact and can hinder the development of unborn babies. So we sent our cameras out to get your thoughts on this. Our question, how concerned are you about a Zika virus threat in Canada? very concerned. I actually went to Mexico in February and um, my mom was very hesitant at sending me because she was like, you're 21, they don't know how long this stays in your body for, so they didn't, my mom didn't want me going, potentially getting it, not knowing I have it, you know, m try to have a family in four or five years and something happened to my baby. So something that I was very concerned about and my boyfriend was very concerned about going to Mexico and we almost didn't go because we were concerned that if we were to try to have a family in the long run, we don't know how long this virus can stay in your system, and so many things were unknown, especially three months ago about the point, that I definitely think it's something that Canadians should be worried about. I'm not particularly worried about it. I think that um, our climate isn't that conducive to its long-term um, impact up here. I certainly think that uh, World Health Organization needs to look at it in the more tropical areas and make sure it doesn't fly around the world. Um, it's a, a, a tough thing to, to have to deal with. I think we have bigger things to be concerned about right now and then I'm sure you know it is a World Health Organization concern and I'm not gonna worry too much about it right now. Uh, I'm not very concerned at all. I think we have really good uh, systems in place 
Uh, I've heard about it in the news, and I, I, I think it's a little bit hyped up. I mean, it, I don't think it's anywhere near like it was for the avian flu, for example. And I think since those epidemics, um, our, uh, our scientists and our um, control uh, controls at airports and things like that have been improved, right? So um, I think there's enough things under control right now that it's not going to be that big of a deal. Uh, not so much, because uh, uh, as long as Health Canada and the... Uh, the um, people at like airports and ports of entry in Canada do the proper screening. I think it'll be. Uh, I think we should be uh, probably 99% sure that it will. It'll be okay. But um, there's always a chance. But I think it's an awfully slim chance. I'm not. If we don't travel to those countries, it's nothing to be super hysterical about. Uh, especially if you're not a pregnant woman. Um, we need to have some calm <laughs> about this whole thing. I really am not too concerned about that one. Um, you know, I think uh, I, I'm sure there's been, you know, money invested. WHO, I'm sure, is putting uh, a significant amount of resources towards that now. And I think as Canadians, we just have to put faith in the fact that, uh, you know, there's people looking into this and, and that they're, they're on the case, so to speak. So not a real threat. For sure, in countries like Brazil, yes, uh, there is some significant concern, but um, you know, in terms of Zika becoming a huge issue in Canada, I wonder um, if it will, just based off of like our climate and our seasons of mosquitoes and all of that. Um, yeah, it's amazing what you'll tell people or what people will think when you involve, especially like pregnancy and childbirth into that. But um, yeah, I, I have low concern is the answer. Any virus threatening Canada, I'm concerned about, you know. Um, like, I'm a Canadian, and uh, we do have good health care and everything else, but, uh, you know, any virus that, uh, that hits Canada is, uh, is a threat to, to our nation. So we should keep an eye on it. Absolutely. I'm not that concerned. It seems that there's a disease that comes out every few years that's supposed to be totally globally threatening, and it's not that big a deal. I mean, it's something to be concerned about, and I think that the appropriate people and the necessary sectors are looking at it, but I'm not crazily, I don't worry about it every day. Not very. I think if I were in Brazil or a uh, southern country, I might be more concerned, or if I was pregnant, I definitely would be concerned. But me personally, um, I don't think Canadians have a lot to worry about right now with regards to Zika virus. I'm not even sure about it because I haven't done much reading on it and that type of thing. I don't know if we could find some way to eliminate all mosquitoes. It would be <laughs> it would be a good way to go about it. But uh, I don't know if they're if they're able to come up with uh, a medical thing that uh, you know antibiotics and that sort of stuff that would fight it. Then you know, as long as the people uh, get onto it right away, you know that type of thing. So yeah, it is a major threat. Uh, any education, any any. Uh, preparation in advance that we do is of utmost importance. Um, people's health is the uh, biggest priority. Um, that kind of safety and precaution is of most importance. No, I'm not concerned about it because if it's here, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, but um, I don't know if it's, uh, I, I don't see it as a big problem at this point. Oh, not very concerned at all. I think, I think, um, I think most Canadians are sensible and um, they can sort of make decisions for themselves about where they travel and take those risks for themselves. I think the Canadian uh, health services are, are excellent and I think we have, we have good public education about these things and I think it's in the media enough that we're, we're all pretty aware of it. And so, uh, yeah, I'm not... I'm not particularly concerned about a mosquito virus from the tropics coming to Saskatchewan. Like, I'm from Costa Rica, so we are used to, well, I've been here for a lot of years, but we are used to those kind of viruses from mosquitoes just, like, taking over in seasons. And I think as long as people are conscious and um, they take care when they travel and when they come back, I don't think there is a need to panic. Where was the first gas station in Canada located? Vancouver, Toronto, or Montreal? Toronto. I'd say Montreal. I'm going to Montreal. Toronto. I would say Montreal. Montreal. I'm going to say Vancouver. Vancouver? Uh, Vancouver. Montreal. The answer, Vancouver. Oh, yes. good job. Look at 
<laughs> Vancouver became home to the first gas station in the country back in 1907. Proportional representation is a system of voting where voters are represented in proportion to how they voted. For example, if 25% of Canadians voted for one particular party, then that party would get roughly 25% of the seats in the House of Commons. Justin Trudeau promised last fall during the election to change Canada's electoral system. Currently, Canada uses the first past the post system, where a winning candidate in any given constituency is declared winner by having the most votes. But does it need to be changed? Our question, should Canada's electoral system be reformed? Most definitely. First to the uh, post, I don't agree with it, but I think each other party's got their own agen uh, agendas on that one to make themselves the winning party from all, for all time sort of thing. How it should be done, I'm not 100% sure. Yes, I believe it should be reformed. It doesn't seem to work very well now. Um, I'm still confused as to which one might be better, but I'm reading in the paper and researching to sort of see what, what might work better because the system we have now does not. I don't know about that. I think the electoral system works all right. Uh, you know, maybe shrink the size of government a little bit would be about the only thing I could think of, right? Like you have how many hundreds of representatives. I don't know if that's really an efficient or good system to be working in, right? It makes it tough to do things sometimes, I think. I s fairly strongly believe so, yes. Though I'm not sure they're debating the way the government is fudging about how to do it. And I never believed that the government in power would. I'm still skeptical. Something that somehow provides you with a choice on the ballot or somehow gives an opportunity for those with the most actual votes to get seats. Because right now I think, especially with the Green Party, Elizabeth May is the only seat and she could probably sit there a long time. Yes, and I'm very against the composition of the current uh, panel because it should reflect the changes and the par composition of Parliament. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, <laughs> there's been a disproportionate amount of support that comes from Western Canada that goes out that way, and yet we have not even an equal say. I think, uh, I know that the representation by uh, population makes sense, but uh, I think that Canada, it's time for Canada to consider uh, representation by region or by province, so each province has an equal say in what happens. This is confederation after all, so we should have an equal say. Uh, no, I think it works. There might be some tweaks. I, I think it may not always be equal representation, but... I think for, for what we have, I think it's pretty good. I don't like all of American politics, but I like that they get to vote for their president directly. I would like to vote directly for my representatives, not just for my local ones and have it count. I believe it should be representative of the individual who receives the most votes rather than the party. And um, I know there were some other proposed reforms, as long as it's reflective of what the majority of Canadians are saying, and not just what the party in power is saying. It, it seems to be okay, I guess. I mean, we have uh, a number of choices. Uh, the process is fairly uh, efficient compared to other countries. We won't mention any. <laughs> so I would, say, I would say there could be some fine tuning done, but you know, the general format is probably okay. It's not broken, don't fix it. And what, uh, why, I guess, what, what gives you the impression that it's not broken? Like? It is what it is. Like, it's just, it seems to be working, so there's nothing really big going wrong. So I just say it is, so, so far, just keep it the way it is. You know what, I don't understand our electoral system enough to have an opinion beyond first to the post certainly seems like an unfair advantage for parties with certain amounts of delegates and certain, or not delegates, but seats in certain areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, representation by um, uh, vote. So um, not voting for the head of a party. Uh, if the Green Party gets 10% or 7% of the popular vote, then they should be represented. Uh, yeah, I think uh, proportional representation of some sort would be a lot better than what we currently have, uh, where, you know, I live in a riding that's heavily NDP and 
if I don't vote NDP, it's like my vote doesn't even really matter in a way. So far, so good. Uh, like in my opinion, you know, you have, it's 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 a is there an ideal method? That's the thing. You know, if they decide to change it, would the next one be any better than the current system or worse? It's really hard to say. I'm I'm personally satisfied with the way things are going right now. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm 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 a, I'm a big advocate of um, uh, participatory democracy, or uh, just to, uh, if they can if they can make it a little bit more representative. Um, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yes, because uh, Ontario and Quebec already decide who our prime minister is before we get to decide, and I don't think that's fair. I think they are demographics that are underrepresented, and at the same time, demographics that are overrepresented by the fact of our electoral system. So, in a democracy, one man is a one one vote, one one person. But currently, it seems like one person has half a vote, and another person has three times the vote. So that is something that should be addressed. I think for for uh, for uh, you know for the sake of our country and, and democracy. Free trade agreements are designed to remove trade barriers between two or more countries. Some advantages may include more variety and lower prices to consumers, a boost in exports and job creation. While opponents of free trade feel it could hurt small businesses, harm the environment and actually take jobs away from Canadians. So we set out to get your opinion on the matter and here it is. Are free trade agreements good or bad for Canada? Yeah, so the thing is with free trade agreements is that they tend to go for the lowest common denominator and they um, uh, they reduce uh, the things that people put in for, uh, for public safety, so regulations and minimum wages and so on. Uh, free trade tends to historically destroy all that. And uh, it's good for people who are part of the system and who are going to make money off of it, but I think generally for the, the, the general population, it isn't very good. And uh, I think it really does affect our self-sufficiency, the Canadian self-sufficiency for especially agricultural products when we start doing exchanges with different countries over that, um, it's going to really hurt our sectors. I think they're good. We're kind of isolated up here with one neighbor, so I think it's uh, a good thing to keep up. My understanding is typically they've been kind of bad for Canada. It's a lot of pro... The, the U.S. gets a lot out of that stuff uh, with NAFTA and all that. Like They get a lot from Mexico and, and Canada. and um, So typically, based on history, I, I don't think they're the greatest thing for us. I don't think they're really that good because we've, uh, over quite a period of time, lost a lot of uh, employment, and uh, I think it hasn't been as good as what uh, the political leaders over all the years have said it was going to be. Well, it depends on the end uh, we come out on. Uh, when, uh, right now, the free trade ag agreements have been uh, favoring the U.S., so we need to have things like the softwood lumber paid for, and we need to have uh, more jobs for Canadians here so uh, we need to have free trade agreements that favor Canada more than the US. I think it's becoming a bad thing because they're not being um, it seems that it's only the rich people benefiting from it I don't see any benefit from it really you know except for things we're buying at the dollar store from China maybe it's cheap I don't know if it would cost any different if it was manufactured here but I guess I don't really I don't really see any big thing for the ordinary person from it. I think for the long haul, I think that you've got to see them as a positive thing. I mean, globalization and the global economy this isn't going away. This is uh, this is the new world order. This is the way things are now. So I think you know to be competitive in the global market, I think we've got to make sure that we keep those trade uh, you know our our doors open for trade um, to any partner who who'd be willing. Well, like, I mean, if Canada is making money on the free trade agreements, then, of course, it's good for Canada. But, I mean, if we're losing jobs to uh, Mexico and, and the United States, no, then absolutely not. Well, I'd say they're totally bad for Canada. The ones that we have with the states are obviously not been beneficial at all in every industry, it just seems. So, um, I would say no. Good. Absolutely. Canada is a trading nation, and uh, we have to have free trade agreements so that we... Uh, have uh, access to global markets? I would say generally bad. Somebody's in it for, uh, for the money. Um, 
uh, sure they're g they're going to say there's a lot of offsets, um, but generally what I've seen in some of the uh, trade deals is that if it hampers another country's ability, then they can actually sue Canada. They can do all kinds of different things uh, legally, and uh, I think it's bad news. You know what I want to say: is six and one and a half dozen the other. Really, uh, it depends on how they're, you know, how they're negotiated and that sort of stuff. And if you're uh, negotiating with another company or a country, what are they giving back to you in return? You know that type of thing. So, it's a hands up type thing. So yeah, depends who are we trading with. So if we free trade agreements, uh, the net benefit with each country would be different. And uh, in many cases, yes; in many cases, no. So it depends what you are trading and which country you are trading with. Uh, it's very complicated. I I, uh, I generally think they're good, uh, but I don't think you can ever have a free trade agreement where there's not other parts of the economy that are hurt. So it's it's always a give and take. I think they're good. Uh, free trade agreements connect different countries in um, in commerce. Um, I myself was born in Costa Rica, and I know that's very important for my country to be able to trade products and to receive products. So. I think it just keeps the world going around, and there has to be an agreement so that it's fair in both ends of the of the spectrum. So, yeah, I agree with that. So, I think when we're talking about free trade agreements, I think I think they can be good for Canada, especially when we're moving our exports into other countries. Um, I think they can be bad for Canada when we're moving other exports into our country that we we currently produce. So free trade agreements, good or bad, I'm, I'm pretty n neutral on them. I don't have a strong opinion either way. Yeah. Which Alberta city is located partly in Saskatchewan? Lloydminster, Red Deer, High River. Lloydminster, Red Deer, High River. Red Deer. High River. Uh, red, whatever the red deer? one. Red Deer. <laughs> red Deer. I like Red Deer. Lloydminster. I agree. R Lloydminster, sorry. Lloydminster. Lloydminster, Red Deer, High River. I'm going to go with the river. High? Or High River, is it? I'm going to go with that one. Red Deer. Lloydminster. Lloydminster. Yeah. Oh, good for you. I heard an article on the radio, something about that. So yeah, <laughs> I yeah. know. You're, you're schooling everybody. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. Known as Canada's border city, Lloydminster is located in Alberta and Saskatchewan. It's the only Canadian city found within two provinces. That's all for this episode of Outburst. Just a reminder, don't forget to check out our new CPAC TV to go app and our CPAC Quiz Canada Trivia app. For more information, check our website, www.cpac.ca. I'm Glenn McGuinness, and on behalf of all my colleagues at the Cable Public Affairs Channel, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.